It's alleged that a gang of child abusers is at large in the city of Hull. He decided it was time to pay for all the presents they'd bought me, and that payment was in sex. But prosecutions for sexual attacks in the UK fail too often, and it's the same for the young women we'll meet in this case. Multiple allegations, no convictions. But what does it take to charge alleged sex offenders? It is, of course, the victim who carries the burden of proof. So how did you feel when they met to tell you that the police investigation was closed? I went a bit crazy in this meeting because I was really upset, but they said there's no further investigations they can do. They've got everything. We can't go any further because of lack of evidence, but there is evidence there. You see the one there? Yep. That's the one. In this series of reports, we will present some of the evidence, starting with Sarah's story. That room, that flat, took my childhood from me. I think I was raped by around 150 men over the three-year period. They were coming in sometimes, 10 or 11 men wanted to rape me per day. 13-year-old Sarah was escaping difficulties at home when she was groomed by two men who brought her food and presents. But after two months, one of them raped her. Then he brought her to this block of flats. He'd obviously decided that I was a good enough candidate to take to the next level and introduced me to this other guy and exchanged some money with this other guy which I later found out I was sold into the sex trade. Experts have told us gang members can get paid to groom girls in this way. In a spider graph Sarah later made for the police, she identifies 11 key players who came to the flat, the two groomers, the buyer and other regular abusers. She numbers them and provides photos, which we've obviously blurred. This is a drawing of herself. Height, four foot six, neon pink leggings, Mickey Mouse t-shirt. This, items in the flat used to intimidate and control. A taser, hammer and handcuffs. How did he persuade you to keep coming back? I had to go. He threatened me. And as a young 13-year-old girl being told you're going to be buried alive and set on fire, it's scary. We have a text exchange from one of the men in 2018 that Sarah photographed on her phone. Where have you been, you lose money for us. I'm sorry, I got into trouble where I live. Lots of men who sex with you asking for you. They want a white I'm not a Yes, you are a He insisted you come immediately. You know what will happen if you don't. We put you in a van and beat you and take you to Hessel Foreshore and burn you while awake, then bury you near water. OK, I'll come. Good Sarah and other alleged victims told us this beauty spot of Hessel Foreshore is one of the places men took them to sexually abuse them. But it mostly happened in flats or hotels and was sometimes filmed. There's videos out there of me as 13, 14, 15 year old little girl being raped by men. I've seen them. They've shown me them. One of the videos is captioned, English girl gets against her own will. And I was just profit to them. You know, sexually assaulted, physically assaulted. Throughout this investigation, we'll be showing our evidence to one of the UK's leading child exploitation experts. Former Chief Police Officer Jim Gamble gave us his view of the threatening text. Well, number one is he's committed a criminal offence because that's a threat to murder. And the Offences Against the Persons Act makes that a crime. But what you do see there is the coercive control. You see the fact that the predator is so confident in their ability, their level of competence at controlling these young people, that they don't even try and hide it or mask it. I, I'd be surprised if, if they're not able to pass the evidential threshold, because what you do have is you have significant levels of corroboration. Humberside police arrested 34 suspects and say they did digital searches on 150 devices seized and that phone records didn't provide supporting evidence. They couldn't confirm the origin of the threatening text and didn't reach the evidence threshold to go to court. But what about corroboration? There are other alleged victims in this case. I met Anna when I was in foster care and I didn't know she was involved. She didn't know I was involved. 
but one day she saw my name on one of the men's phones. Anna tells Sarah about someone we'll call Man A, the same man who allegedly sent the threatening text to Sarah, and they both admit to being raped by him. He had his hands around my throat and let go when I was literally about to die, admits Sarah in a text. Yes, same, says Anna. I couldn't breathe when he did it. I couldn't even scream. He had my neck so tight. Anna then texted a long list of abusers, some of whom Sarah recognised. Anna reported it to the police. She saw my name on his phone. She knew what he was like. She knew what he'd done to her. A third woman also told us about allegations against Man A. But in our next report, we will meet Anna, who has collated a whole dossier of evidence. The police knew what was going on. Like, my mum was reporting me missing sometimes three times a day. Delving into this case doesn't just expose how one group of women couldn't get charges. It perhaps explains why fewer than 2% of alleged rape victims in the UK get their day in court. Jason Farrell, Sky News. <laughs>